Why styles are changing, minds are changing, why everything is changing. So you and I must consider that we're living in very, very changing times. And what might be true today may not be true tomorrow. And without any further ado, I present to you Brother Minister Malcolm. And I pray that you and I will listen, listen, hear, and understand. Thank you. We declare our right on this earth to be a man, to be a human being, to be respected as a human being, to be given the rights of a human being in this society, on this earth, in this day, which we intend to bring into existence by any means necessary. I had the honor of walking the historic 125th Street in Harlem, New York where well, Malcolm established his initial platform to enlighten and empower the people. We don't waste our time on 125th Street, but you can reach more people in the street who want to change than you can in the bourgeoisie society, the bourgeoisie church, and the bourgeoisie circles. We, our program is directed toward the man in the street. So we spend our time in the street, and what we do with that man, instead of trying to change the white man in your mind, make, up, make you accept us, we change the mind of the black man and make him accept himself. Casual observers to history reduce Brother Malcolm's legacy to his famous line, By any means necessary. But it is contrary to his legacy because he excelled in every category like leadership and organizing, mobilizing and electrifying the masses too. We wake up, we clean up, and we stand up. What makes the so-called Negro unable to stand on his own feet? He has no self-confidence. He has no proud confidence in his own race. Because the white man destroyed your and my past, destroyed our knowledge of our culture. And by having destroyed it, now we don't know we have any achievements, any accomplishments. And as long as you can be convinced that you never did anything, you can never do anything. And today, the effect that it has on you and me, we don't think we can stand on our own two feet. And once we can stand up like a man on our own feet, we stop begging the white man. And we stop apologizing to the white man. We stop compromising with the white man. Then the world will look at us with recognition and respect. His life is a true example of being born again son of Garveyites to Detroit Red to Malcolm X to Mecca and then visiting Africa to become a true Pan-African. Who are you? You don't know. Don't tell me Negro. That's nothing. What were you before the white man named you a Negro? And where were you? And what did you have? What was yours? What language did you speak then? What was your name? It couldn't have been Smith or Jones or Bunch, or Powell, that wasn't your name. They don't have those kind of names where you and I came from. No, what was your name? And why don't you now know what your name was then? Malcolm was touched by the ancestors to articulate their pain, triumph, and truth. He gave the voice to the voiceless and the weary souls to get us through. Malcolm was brilliant in awakening the minds of African people to the point I credit him for being my spiritual mentor the things that's going to help to bring this about is, is again, is the independence of Africa. One of the only reasons in the, uh, that we in the West have never organized, we have hated our image and our African image. And because Africa has been in the hands of people who have created an image of Africa that's negative and hateful. And uh, it has been hateful to us. We haven't wanted to identify with it. But now that Africa is getting independent and in a position to create its own image and it's a positive image, uh, those of us in the West look at the African image and see how positive it is. We begin to identify with it. We become proud of, of Africa and we, we become proud of our African blood, our African heritage. And this is what is beginning to make the Africans in the Western Hemisphere today have, develop more race pride. And as, as this race pride develops, then it has a tendency to make us want to unite together and work together. And your Western imperialists and colonialists uh, consider this to be a grave threat. His undying and revolutionary love for Africa and her people is only rivaled by a few, which is why he is widely credited for being our shining black prince and reconnecting us to our heritage as spirit anew. The thing that I want to make clear, no matter how much respect 
no matter how much uh, uh, recognition whites show toward me, as far as I'm concerned, as long as that same respect and recognition is not shown toward every one of our people in this country, it doesn't exist for me. Casual observers and our enemies try to tell us Malcolm is an insignificant figure in history. But why would J. Edgar Hoover deem Malcolm as a black messiah? Because Malcolm effectively raised our people's consciousness higher, higher to show our potential is unlimited, so we can rid ourselves of our racial apathy and being so timid towards our freedom. Our freedom, Malcolm taught us to use our avenues to achieve it and to know that you don't ask for it, you take it. History is a weapon that was prevalent throughout his words. Use it as a guidepost when we don't know where to turn. He gave us the foundation to the crisis of our identity in his profound words. Because you can't hate the roots of a tree and not hate the tree. You can't hate your origin and not end up hating yourself. There is no freedom for us unless we unite in the diaspora with our homeland. Long live the spirit of Brother Malcolm as he helps carry us through for all Africans. Today, for the first time, the black people of the West are beginning to look homeward. They're beginning to look back toward the mother continent of Africa, and they're gaining uh, spiritual strength from these roots. The African continent is on the rise. The motherland is on the rise, uh, fighting and seeking and fighting for his place in the sun. And we will not rest until that place has been secured. Let's go!